Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Patagonia. Uh, so we're gonna keep rocking through the GI section of Kurt's notes. Um, today, I'm gonna go over medication injury in the GI tract. So the first section is non-specific injury. Um, so we can get pill esophagitis. When we have pill retained in the esophagus and there's not enough water or the patient is laying supine, uh, can lead to caustic or osmotic injury. Uh, often occurs in elderly women, can lead to odonophagia or painful swallowing and retrosternal pain, um, and also can lead to strictures and perforation. Uh, it often occurs at the site of the aortic arch um, in the mid esophagus. And common offenders in pill esophagitis are antibiotics, NSAIDs, iron, bisphosphonates. And uh, some of the findings are going to be ulceration, acute inflammation, granulation tissue, and a helpful finding is this polarizable crystalline material. Uh, so these are actually pill fragments. Next up, we've got reactive or chemical gastropathy. Some common offenders that can lead to this are ethanol or alcohol and NSAIDs. And you Histologically, you're going to get this foveolar hyperplasia, this really hyperplastic epithelial surface with corkscrewing glands, mucin depletion, edema, and few inflammatory cells. That's reactive or chemical gastropathy. Next up, we're going to get into the colitis. So, can cause most patterns of colitis. Um, also, there's a separate section that we'll go over of the inflammatory patterns of the GI tract and you can check that out. So there's a few patterns and then there's gonna be associated drug or medications that can cause those patterns. And I'm not gonna read all of this, um, but just reference it. I uh, will go over the patterns so we can have eosinophilic colitis, um, lymphocytic or collagenous colitis, focal active colitis, ischemic colitis, apoptotic colitis, pseudomembranous colitis and neutropenic colitis. So just review this table and uh, just be aware and mindful of the various drugs that can cause these patterns of colitis. <clears throat> so some more specific drug patterns are as follows. Um, with NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they inhibit cyclooxygenase, which decreases prostaglandins, um, leading to decreased mucus, um, acid neutralizing bicarbonate and mucosal blood flow, which is going to cause mucosal injury and also deplete ATP. Uh, this is going to lead to inflammation and ulceration in any part of the GI tract. Uh, can cause strictures and diaphragm disease, can cause erosion or ulceration in any part of the GI tract. And then in the esophagus can lead to acute esophagitis, ulceration or stricture in the stomach, can lead to the reactive gastropathy that we just saw before with the corkscrew glands or ulceration. And in the intestines can lead to mostly active inflammation with some mild chronic architectural changes, ulceration and lymphocytic and collagenous colitis. <clears throat> Next up, we've got PPI, or proton pump inhibitor. Um, as we know, PPIs are used to treat esophagitis and peptic ulcer disease. Um, how they work is they inhibit parietal cell acid secretion, leading to less stomach acid, um, which leads to an increased secretion of gastrin, which is trying to compensate for that less stomach acid. Um, leading to parietal cell hypertrophy and neuroendocrine, neuroendocrine cell hyperplasia, um, which can lead to an increased incidence of fundic gland polyps. So these like dilated glands and spaces um, you can see with PPIs, but you can also see with in uh, fundic gland polyps. Um, next up, we've got colchicine. So colchicine is a medication used to treat gout and it inhibits microtubule polymerization um, leading to the interference of mitosis, um, chemotaxis, and neutrophil degranulation. So the most characteristic finding 
are multiple arrested metaphase mitoses, particularly in rings, as we see here, this ring mitoses. Um, and also there's often apoptotic bodies and lots of reactive changes. So the taxanes and the colchicine uh, drugs, taxanes as a class and then colchicine often lead to this ring mitosis, which is classic, very testable. Next up, we've got cytotoxic chemotherapy. So with some of the chemotherapies, you're gonna to lead to epithelial atypia, sometimes mimicking dysplasia. And like I just mentioned, the taxol class is also gonna to lead to those ring mitoses that we see here, like colchicine. So colchicine and taxanes, you get those ring, mit ring mitotic figures. And you can also have severe neutropenia, which can cause neutropenic colitis where after mucosal damage, there's opportunistic bacteria invade, causing necrosis and pneumatosis, and can even lead to septic shock. Next up, we've got antacids and sulcrophate. So this leads to gastric metastatic calcifications due to calcium and phosphate imbalances. And you can see the uh, small calcifications under the mucosal surface pointed to here by the arrow. Um, just like you would see calcs anywhere, perhaps in a breast biopsy or elsewhere throughout the body. Kind of this purple um, material that you can see the processor has a hard time getting all the way through. Next up, we've got iron. So iron appears brown and granular on H&E and blue on the iron stain. So here, clearly this is an iron stain because it appears blue. On H&E, it'll be brown and granular. Iron is usually associated with erosion or ulceration and sometimes reactive chemical gastropathy or chronic gastritis. Some iron deposition patterns include deposition in the lamina propria or macrophages and prior mucosal microhemorrhages or coarse crystals at the surface such as from an iron pill as demonstrated here or subtle uniform deposition in the deep glands from iron overload. Very testable, this next section on resins. So definitely review these. Um, these commonly come up on question banks that I've seen. Um, so the first one, k exalate is used to treat hyperkalemia and renal failure, causing ischemic and ulcerative changes linked to fatalities and perforation. So urgent diagnosis is important. And it's going to be purple on H and E with those narrow fish scale patterns. So this is K-exalate. Next up, Sevelimer is used to treat hyperphosphatemia and renal failure. And it's associated with mucosal injury. And it's going to have this bright pink to rusty yellow appearance on H and E with an irregular fish scale pattern. So Sevelimer, pink and yellow, K-exalate, purple. And then you have bile acid sequestrants, such as cholesteramine, which are the medications that bind bile acids, lowering cholesterol, um, not associated with injury, and they're typically bright pink or orange on H&E with the smooth, glassy texture. So if it's smooth or glassy, potentially think of the bile acid sequestrant class, whereas this uh, scaly fish patterns are more k or sevelomere, and purple being k and pink and rusty yellow for Savellamer. Next up, we've got doxycycline, which is in the tetracycline, cl tetracycline class, which elsewhere in the body we associate with dark pigmentation, um, can occur in the teeth and other areas in the head and neck, other organs. But in the GI tract, it can cause superficial mucosal necrosis and erosion. Uh, capillary damage with microthrombi and hyaline necrosis, and a background reactive chemical gastritis and chronic gastritis. So this is what you may see with a doxycycline injury pattern. Next up, we have angiotensin II receptor blockers. So these are the ARTAN drugs, so omelsartan and losartan, used to treat hypertension, and they induce severe diarrhea. The duodenal changes are often indistinguishable from celiac disease, so you're gonna have villus blunting and increased intraepithelial lymphocytes, 
from these angiotensin II receptor blockers, which is what you would also see in uh, celiac disease. Um, however, you're gonna have them often more acute and chronic inflammation in the lamina propria, and sometimes you even see sub-epithelial collagen deposition. So these uh, drug classes and medication effects can be tough because they can mimic other colitis patterns or celiac disease or other GI um, entities, so they're, it's a good, good uh, topic to review. Next up, we've got mycophenolate mofetil, which is an immunosuppressive drug usually used after solid organ transplantation. Um, in the GI system, it can be toxic, um, often limiting use. And histologically, it's gonna resemble graft-versus-host disease or Crohn's disease. So in graft-versus-host disease or Crohn's, you're gonna see those increased crypt apoptoses with patchy neutrophilic inflammation and degenerating damage to the crypts with architectural damage and granulomas. So if there's more eosinophils, that favors a drug effect. And if there's more apoptoses, that favors graft versus host disease. So something good to be aware of. We actually had a graft versus host disease case um, a couple months ago in our department. And one of our GI pathologists, he's actually my mentor. He emphasized this fact here at the end that if there's more eosinophils, that's gonna favor a drug effect like mycophenolate mofetil. And if there's more apopto apoptotic bodies or apoptoses, that's going to favor GVHD. Next up, we've got bowel prep and laxatives. So many act through increasing osmolarity of the stool, which traps water in the lumen, leading to loose stool. So you're going to get mucin depletion, focal active colitis or cryptitis, with increased apoptotic bodies and erosions. Um, so down here we've got melanosis coli, which is classically associated with irritant laxatives, but actually an indicator of increased epithelial cell turnover. So apoptosis leads to debris phagocytized by macrophages, leading to lipofusion accumulation, and it looks yellow or brown. And this can be seen with many drugs, including NSAIDs, etc. And this is melanosis coli. Next class, we've got checkpoint inhibitors, such as anti-PD-1, anti-PDL-1, and anti-CTLA therapy. So as we move more and more into this generation and time where we're using more Im immunotherapy drugs that are highly effective, it's good to be mindful of what those may look like um, in our patients, uh, specifically in the GI tract and elsewhere. So some unintended consequences of some of these medications and how we can monitor their effectiveness and if they're at too high of a level, perhaps. So these uh, medications activate immune tumor destruction, but can also cause autoimmune or immune-related adverse events. And they will respond to steroids. So in the colon, most patterns can occur, such as lymphocytic colitis, collagenous colitis, acute self-limited colitis, or apoptotic colitis. And then in the stomach, you can get perigland inflammation with focal enhancing gastritis pattern, um, not diffuse. And then in the duodenum, you can get villus blunting, increased intraepithelial lymphocytes, and apoptoses with Brunner's gland inflammation. So none of this is overly specific, none of these findings. It's really just something <clears throat> for us to keep in mind whenever we're working, working something up in the GI tract and we're not 100% sure what the cause is, we can never totally rule out um, medication as being a potential reason for the pattern that we're seeing. Next up, we have idilalisib, which I am not familiar with and I may have mispronounced. But this is a specific small molecule drug used to treat CLL or SLL and follicular lymphoma. It can cause severe diarrhea in the changes seen in the colon and the small bowel. Again, we're seeing a trend here. 
increased apoptosis, lymphocytic colitis, and focal active colitis or cryptitis. Next up, we've got yttrium labeled microspheres appear as uniform, dark, opaque, perfect circles given by interventional radiology as internal radiation therapy for hepatic malignancies and you often also see radiation injury. This is most common to see in the upper GI due to shared circulation with the liver. Some additional things, so for diuretics, it's going to decrease circulatory volume which will lead to ischemia at usual watershed areas. Um, you're going to see classic ischemic findings with diuretics like crypt withering, lamin propria hyalinization. Um, for ergotamine, <clears throat> which can be given for migraines, this induces vasospasm, which can also lead to localized ischemia in the GI tract. So small localized ischemic ulcers, um, not in watershed zones. Glutaraldehyde is used to disinfect colonoscopes. Um, it's used less now, but it is a contact irritant in the rectum and the colon. And hormonal therapies like oral contraceptives. Um, so for estrogen, produces a hypercoagulable state, which can lead to mesenteric venous thrombosis and ischemic colitis. And that's it. So at the last page, he just has a nice table here that kind of summarizes everything that we went over, the various histological patterns of injury that you can see. Again, there's a lot of this that overlaps, right? A lot of increased apoptoses, a lot of chronic colitis patterns. You can see ischemic colitis, lymphocytic colitis, and all of this um, just is good to know and be aware of. It's not going to necessarily point to a specific drug, but just being able to remember that um, it's good to review our patient's charts, see what medications they're on, and then factor that into what we're seeing under the microscope. So I hope you enjoyed, and uh, have a good day.